Vicky here, writing for Jesus. Okay, it is time to do the Finally Fall book tag. And the past couple days, it has felt like amazing outside. It's been like 60s, um, it kind of goes to the 70s in the afternoon. Yeah, like I just like sat out there the other night with Bandit, my dog, and just like sat out there and we're just looking at the stars. Okay, so uh, Celestria tagged me. Um, I'm not sure who the original creator is, but I'll go ahead and um, link Celestria's channel down below. These are pretty long uh, little statements here, and then the question afterward. So, oh, and the thumbnail for this video is uh, the painting that I did um, at my church, and I gave it to one of my friends, and she's like, I'm gonna put it up like right now because we've been decorating like for fall. So, and as you can see, I don't ever like decorate for the seasons or anything, um, but I do have books everywhere. I, I love that, so. Okay, question number one. In fall, the air is crisp and clear, a book with a vivid setting. So, I have four books counted with the stars. Uh, she describes Egypt and them being in the wilderness like so well like I could just feel the sand and a Nile River like really really beautiful uh, about this Egyptian slave joining the Hebrews in the Exodus fantastic book my first biblical fiction that I've really really enjoyed um, fantastically well written beautiful story um, loved it so then Veiled in Smoke this one is about the uh, 1940, is it 1940? No, not 1940. Yeah, right? What is the year? I think I have them here at the, it's not 1940, I don't think it is. 1871, sorry. Mm -hmm. 1871, the Chicago Fire. I could feel the flames, I could hear like the screams. I mean, like, she's a really good writer, very immersive and yeah, I, um, I could just see, like, how ravaged the town had become and just how, like, they said that they were selling, like, items that had been, like, melted and morphed, like, and, like, kind of half burned in the fire. And so things were all twisted and stuff. Like, it was crazy. I could just see everything. Um, fantastic book. I love this one. Yeah. <laughs> really, really good. And then... In Search of a Prince. Um, I had gotten rid of this. I gave it to my friend and she enjoyed it, but she gave it back to me and I was like, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> so I don't love this book, um, but the description of the place was really good. I really could see the island. Um, it was like a made up island of um, Africa. It was like a Alore, something like that. Yeah, so it was really pretty. It felt kind of like this Hawaiian kind of trip, like the pretty palm trees, like, um, yeah, it just felt like a resort, like just really, really pretty and just sunny all the time. They were on the beach, really, really pretty. So I don't know if I'd like, I guess I'd recommend it because everybody loves it. I'm just really picky, but I just hated the climax. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I've said that like a thousand times on this channel. Um, feel free to skip ahead. <laughs> and then. Hatchet, one of my all-time favorites. Um, I really felt like I was there with him, like when he's like just struggling and just going through these horrible times. The Canadian woods somewhere. Just everything that he describes that he goes through, like just the pain and the, the hotness, the heat, you know, the mosquitoes, like it was, ugh. Like it was so well done like I felt like I was just right there with him suffering along with him and it's so good there are a few people who do not like the book because of the way it's written um he does repeat himself for effect but I really like the way he does it and it's short I mean he doesn't repeat himself too much because I get annoyed when authors repeat themselves um I, I love it I loved this book and it actually helped me write one of my action scenes in my second novel, um, this book really helped with that. So, question two. Nature is beautiful, but also dying. A book beautifully written, but um, deals with grief. Um, I'm gonna say Veiled in Smoke again. Um, this is 
pretty heavy with everything that they lose in the fire. Um, people think that their father is like going crazy because he has PTSD from the war. And they end up putting him in a straitjacket. He goes to like an asylum and she describes what it's like at the asylum. And it's scary. Like, it's like, whoa. Um, but it's beautifully written. And I really enjoyed it. So, but it does deal with grief and loss and yeah, lots of stuff. Um, and then the third book in the trilogy, um, this one is really heavy as well. Um, I usually can't do heavy books, but I actually was okay with these, um, about the sinking of the Eastland and just, man, hearing everybody just like screaming on the ship and like their kids freaking out and like, it's just, it's hard. It was a little hard to read at times, but the faith was good and the story was amazing. The mystery, like... It was so good, so well written. Um, I really, really highly recommend her. Question three. Fall is back to the school season. Um, a nonfiction book that taught you something new. Okay, well, definitely, um, I just finished this. Tell me the stories of Jesus. One of the only nonfiction books I've ever read and finished, <laughs> completed. It taught me a lot about Jesus' parables and like what they really mean. Like I understood like, I already had known some of the stuff in here, but then I learned new things, and I was like, whoa, like, that is so cool. Like, I think one of the coolest things that I learned was when he talks about, um, he gives the parable about Lazarus and the rich man. He says that the main, main message of that story is how Abraham is talking to the rich man, and he's like, you know, it doesn't matter if I sent Lazarus to your brothers. It doesn't matter if they saw someone raised from the dead. They're not going to believe. They have the law of the prophets. They have the law of Moses. They have, you know, the Torah. Like, they have the Bible. They have the scriptures. If they don't believe that, they're not going to believe anything. And so it just really ingrained in my head how the Bible is everything we need. And it is so powerful. And, like, we shouldn't beat ourselves up if we're like, ah, oh, like... I didn't change this person like I should have done more like I need more I need different you know books and I need all these things like all we need is the Lord all we need is his wisdom all we need is his word like everything always goes back to the Bible and yeah so that was something I really really enjoyed um yeah it taught me a lot and I highly recommend it it was beautiful really enjoyed it question four in order to stay warm it's good to spend time with people we love a fictional family or friend group you'd like to be a part of. The book that I chose is Frozen 2, novelization. They're, they're a friend group. They're just adorable. I love their friendship. I love the sisters. I love Kristoff. I love Sven. I love Olaf. Oh my goodness, he's hilarious. He is just so funny. So that will be super fun to hang out with them and like hang out with Elsa and see her like you know, make snowballs and make ice and like, that would just be so cool. And also, um, characters that I thought of like with movies, I thought of the Adventures in Wonderland. Oh my goodness, the Mad Hatter and the March Hare, especially the Mad Hatter. I wish that they were real. And I have my mirror in my room. Um, I really wish it was real and I could like walk through my mirror and go to Wonderland and hang out with everybody there because they are the sweetest people like it does not have that you know dark feeling that like the new movies have um which i should try watching those because i love johnny depp um and i like the original alice in wonderland cartoon it's so wacky and it's funny um but that show they have three that are on vhs that shows you how old the show is um we have all three and then um they have more though, like on YouTube. There were like more episodes. And I was like, what? Why didn't these go on VHS? Like, I love this show. It is so funny. So uh, yeah, definitely those guys. We'd love to hang out with them. <laughs> Question five. The colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. A pile of fall covered spines. Fall colored spines, sorry. Let me grab that and oranges. This pile contains honor bound, 
like a romantic suspense book by Haley Richman. The Edge of Recall by Kristen Heitzman. It's uh, another romantic suspense. Recorder by Kathy McCrum, sci-fi. I actually started this. I need to finish it. It was really good. The Kill Order by James Dashner. Book four in the Maze Runner series. Yeah, that's the prequel, the fourth book that he wrote. So. Mark of the King by Jocelyn Green. I think this is her second novel. And Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. Classic. Uh, question six. Fall is the perfect time for telling stories about a fire, a book where someone is telling a story. I could not think of a single book. I feel like that's not common, but I feel like I should have been able to think of one, and I couldn't. I was looking around my house, I was like thinking back to other books I've read, and I was like, I can't think of one. So I'm just going to say the Bible, because Jesus tells many parables in the Bible, and a lot of people are always telling their story and their salvation story and, you know, talking about good things and talking about the gospel um, in the Bible. So I recommend the Bible, and I'm going to use that as my answer. Question seven. Nights are getting darker. A dark, creepy read. I don't read creepy stuff. Like, I don't even know how y'all read Jamie Jo Wright. When y'all talk about her books, I actually skip. <laughs> Because I get scared just listening to what they're about. Like, uh, I can't do anything scary. I just cannot. Um, but then yet, well, I don't. I don't watch creepy stuff either. But I feel like I'm even more sensitive when it comes to books. So, um, but I am going to say, um, the last Christian. I forgot to show this in one of my book haul videos uh, by David Gregory. It doesn't sound like dark creepy, but it sounds like suspenseful and like it's kind of like an apocalyptic. I read the first page on thrift books and I was like, this sounds kind of scary, but I really want to try it. It sounds crazy. Like the world's leading artificial intelligence industrialist has perfected a technique for downloading the human brain into a silicon form. Brain transplants have begun and with them comes the potential of eliminating physical death altogether but at what expense? And the AI stuff like creeps me out. Like the stuff that they're talking about on the internet, like the stuff they're making. I'm like, have y'all seen Terminator? Have y'all seen iRobot? Who needs it? Like it's dangerous. Like just stop. Like we don't need it, stop. So, but this sounded really intriguing. I was like, I'm curious to see what this guy has to say about it and like what's gonna happen. And then this one actually. I've heard more things about it and I'm a little scared to try it because on the back it says a delightfully unique setting and heroes that feel like friends. Oh, and zombies and metal men. So I'm like zombies, like I actually love playing the Walking Dead video game at Dave and Buster's and main event, those kind of places. My dad used to watch the Walking Dead until they killed off his favorite character but reading about it i don't know i don't know this is the darkest thing that i own everything else is just like really chill really light and you know not that dark just like suspenseful i guess but i don't know <laughs> question eight the days are getting colder and shorter a short heartwarming read for this one i had to say <laughs> frozen we'll always have each other so cute. And look how fallish this book looks. I mean, look at that. Ah, they're baking pumpkins. So fallish. All the leaves changing. Like, so cute. So cute. It's just adorable. It's just about how some things change, but you know, their friendship will never change. And it's just beautiful. It's like just a few pages. I just love it. It's just so sweet. I won this at a friend's house. They had a little party and um, I won like one of the games and so I won this and I was like, yeah, I love Frozen. I love Frozen so much. It's a perfect gift for me. So question nine, 
fall returns every year. So did the other season. <laughs> um, an old favorite you'd like to return to soon. So Mistletoe Promise. Uh, this is such a short book. Um, this is the kind of book that I love to just pick it up and just read a scene. Like, it's one of those books where every sentence is well written. It's just, he knows how to pack a punch, like, really beautifully. Like, this book is just so deep and just beautiful. I just oh, love it. It is just so special to me. I want to get back to this soon. Um, I keep just looking at it on my shelves, but I'm like, well, I want to read new books. So I don't know when I'll get to it again, but yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, and question 10. Fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Um, what are your favorite cozy reading accessories? So I like wearing comfy clothes, like big t-shirt like this, um, and like sweatpants or like pajama pants. Um, that's always fun. Or shorts, whatever. And then I have my little light here. So it's really nice because I'll put it on my headboard while I'm laying in bed and then read. So perfect spot for it. It's hard to see. I just tap it to change the color, change the brightness, and then just hold it down to turn it off. And it just has a little charger, so I love that. And I usually just get it with a comfy blanket or I'll just be on my bed, so I'll be under the covers there. But I have this little mermaid tail that I like to be in when I read sometimes. Or if I'm watching a movie. And then her feet go inside the slipper. There's a mermaid. <laughs> so super fun. So that's it. So Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and happy fall, everyone. Um, I will go ahead and tag uh, Sierra Trotter, uh, Krista at uh, Books and Jams, uh, Sarah from Sarah's Tangled Tales. So that's it. That's the video. Thank you for watching. Um, hope you're having a good day and I will talk to you guys next time.